Say hello to Rana, the trustiest of companions, the bestest of guides, a masterful forest ranger whose skill puts all others to shame, even Tainari. Were the whole lot to attack her at once, they still wouldn't stand a chance against her. Their strikes would simply bounce off her, and while she may flinch, perhaps even wince to fool her enemies into thinking they've affected her, it would all be in vain. For you see, Rana is a god walking amongst mere mortals. A statement that holds true even if the mortals she happened to be walking amongst at the time were the Archons themselves. She would lash out with that same one or two hit combo, and eventually, she would win. Because Rana is literally invincible. Anyone who's done the first part of the Aranyaka quest in Sumeru would probably have noticed this. Leave her alone when a battle begins, and she'll take every hit without losing even a single point of health. But that's just the thing, she has a health bar. The telltale sign of something that can be killed in video games. So naturally, this begs the question, is it possible to defeat her? Let's find out. First up, what happens if we leave her alone with the fungi? The star of the quest makes it seem like she's in a really tough bind here. Nothing. What a shocker. And elements? They don't affect her. If we light a fire under her, she marches through it, unfazed. Let's move on to something a little more ferocious. Spinal crocodiles. Okay, that ain't working. Given my example in the introduction of this video, that a bunch of spinal crocodiles fail isn't too surprising. Let's take it up one more notch. But to do so, we need to move her. Under normal circumstances, this wouldn't work. She constantly engages with the spinal crocodiles, which causes her to move around a lot. But I noticed that, when she finished defeating all but the last two, she ran back to her starting spot a spot that happened to be far enough away that the spinal crocodiles lost interest. And she just sort of stood there. That meant I could move her. Interestingly enough, she can be lifted with Starfell Sword. But for now, we just need to walk against her for a very long time. I plan to take her into a withering zone and pit her against a flying ruin drake. But halfway there, some Fatui rained on my parade. Still, after seeing her take the brunt of a pyro agent special attack, I'm pretty certain that the Ruin Drake wouldn't have fared much better. She can even see the guy when he's cloaked. What can't Rana do? Why does she even need the Traveler's help? She even chased after this Pyro Gunner, despite him losing interest in the fight. Although afterwards... Oh man, this was painful to watch. All my work in pushing her here, gone. Just like that. Though it's impressive that she runs the whole way and doesn't simply vanish and reappear. Next on the list, fall damage. Even enemies can take fall damage. Ha! I object. There is just no stopping this woman. If it were later revealed that she's the daughter of Shang Shu, I'd believe it. Literally stronger than an Archon. But there's something on this screen that can defeat her. Something that, when exposed to enough of it, will make her melt away as if she's some sort of green wicked witch. That something? Water. Let's go for a swim, Rana. I'm pushing her to the north since spinal crocodiles are in the opposite direction. While there's certainly more water to the south, I don't want to risk engaging the enemies again. That seems to always make her run back to her starting point, hoping there's enough water up here to do the trick. 
there's an area that causes Traveler's on here to swim. He's shorter than her, but maybe it'll work. The water is getting deeper. Up to her waist, chest. Okay, so only her head is above. I'm a bit worried that this might not work. Let's lift her out with Starfell's sword and drop her. Maybe something will change. Dang. Truthfully, I was about to throw in the towel here, so that she could dry off and we could get back to the quest. But something told me to keep trying. I examined the train underwater, and noted there were a few spots left that appeared deeper, so I made some minor adjustments. Nope. I think that's victory. Vanished. Straight into thin air or water, I guess. If we slow this down frame by frame, we first see that she does indeed take damage. Her entire health bar turns yellow, the color used to indicate health drain after receiving damage. Second, we see that traveler San gets the axe he wanted. Funny callback to the response we can give Rana earlier in the quest. Both of these are only shown for a single frame, and I only noticed them while editing. To clarify, she did not respawn at her original location. She's not back fighting with the Spinal Crocodiles either. She has been deleted from the game. Rana has been defeated. I had a feeling this would work. I've done something similar to Star Snatcher in Shao's story quest. While that's not an invincible NPC, his fate is the same. Vanishing upon entering deep water. I, uh... Also pushed some dogs into water a long, long time ago, and each one of them vanished upon touching the surface. NPCs just don't like water. Unfortunately, she does respawn after this segment of the quest finishes. I suppose that's to be expected, but we can relish in this victory, even if it's temporary. Well, that was a fun little experiment, but if I'm this distracted so early on in the quest, how in the heck am I ever going to get through it? Lots of work to do. Thanks for watching. If these sort of silly experiments are your kind of thing, a subscribe would be welcome, but definitely check out this other one I did where I glitched Child out of the Golden House battle and dropped him off the map. And if you're curious as to why Aether is the only character in my party for most of this footage, allow me to direct you to the glitchy and sometimes insane Traveler-only series, traveler San, in which breaking the game and making everything far more difficult than it needs to be is par for the course. There are links to both on screen now. This is Musashi, signing off. Till next time.